Hello, uh, strategists, generals and soldiers of the Second World War. Welcome back to Panzerkorps Gold and playing hardball. And the beginning of the storm on Stalingrad. Here we are. So we have cut off the city on the, in the north and we have we are con taken control of the western area of the city. Um, and the depot, what was the name, Bukinovka or something? where we found extensive supplies of land and lease equipment that the American and British allied forces have, well, thankfully uh, provided for the Soviet Union. And now part of that has fallen in our Wehrmacht hands. Yeah, and thank you, by the way, just to break the role playing for a moment. Thank you to Jeremy for pointing out that uh, the significance uh, of the this uh, land and lease aid uh, that, by the way, was, yeah, uh, you could say uh, downplayed by the Soviet propaganda later on. Um, so those numbers were actually significant. I already have told about uh, talked about that. Uh, yeah, so for example, the, um, the steel production of the Soviet Union, yeah, uh, was uh, 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 there were uh, like one third of the steel production was added by this land and lease aid, uh, while uh, uh, more than 90% of the train equipment and trains were provided this way to the Soviet Union. And we all know that modern warfare is all about logistics as well. Yeah, so the this land and lease was certainly a significant factor. However, I personally also think, and that's what I pointed out in the comments, um, I think that uh, while it was a very, very significant factor, uh, this, it's not, you know, it's not uh, a it wasn't a guarantee that the Soviets would win or lose with or without it, you know, um, because there were so many other factors at play and the Soviet Union itself uh, had a tremendously high production of uh, war equipment. Yeah? Let's have a look at this, for example, I just, uh, checked it a little bit so you guys know like if you work scientifically you always need at be the, the best thing is like at least three but always several uh, sources for the same information yeah and of course you like with all the let's plays uh, that i'm uh, doing and especially this one with panzer core we just want to uh, have a, a grand overlook yeah that's that's what the let's play can do it's not a scientific work, yeah. But the thing is, we can have a certain insight, yeah, and understand the gr the greater context, yeah. So, and here we, for example, I found this one, Warwick AC UK. So this is an English source from the United Kingdom. Yeah. Well, we can think if is it biased or not, but it, it, it gives us a certain idea at least. We don't know of if these numbers are exactly correct. Yeah. It appears. Warwick, yeah, it seems to be serious and professional, as is Springer. And we can just compare the numbers here, just for uh, just as an example for the uh, the industrial capacity. So, for example, here, 1940, we we have all these columns here for the uh, for the uh, years in the war. 1940, the Germans produced. This is in the thousands, yeah. So one million three hundred fifty-two thousand uh, rifles, for example. Yeah, and you can compare the numbers here. The Soviets surpassed that every year except for 1944, and I guess that was because there was no more need for all those rifles, right? Machine guns being a main weapon, like in German Schwerpunktwaffe, so. Uh, uh, main focus weapon, a, a more, a more uh, important weapon. Uh, they produced 96,000, while the Germans only produced 59,000 in 1940. So, and that's, they increased the production to, they nearly doubled it the next year, 1941. However, the Soviets surpassed that significantly. So, and then 
the numbers rise even further. Here machine guns, for example, 117,000 in 1942 and already 350,000 in 42 with the Soviet Union, right? So guns, the same thing. The Germans had 6,000 guns. Yeah, so like artillery guns. Soviets 15,000. Next year, Germans 22,000, but the Soviets doubled the number. For, whoops, sorry, 41,000. Yeah, and uh, that goes on if you look at these numbers. Except, well, okay, like in the last year where it was uh, apparent that they would win, they ob ob obviously reduced their production a bit. Yeah, while in Germany, the industrial capacity was basically destroyed by all the bombing. So they were not able to uh, do it. So, but this is also, we can see they only really produced really high numbers of equipment in 1943 and uh, 44. That is also another point. Uh, I'll just uh, get back to that one in a few moments. Let's have a little, uh, a little bit more information. For example, combat aircraft, the Germans produced 6,600 planes in 1940, while Soviets surpassed that already in 1940. And then next year, 8,400 in 41, while the Soviets had 12,400. Yeah, so, and that goes on. They always surpass it significantly. Although, of course, the Soviets had really, really high losses as well. Yeah, so, and that's the thing here. Let's just double check that with the Springer data, production figures, tanks and SP guns. Yeah, you can see here 1939, the Soviets nearly tripled the number and always surpassing it 41, 42 in, uh, in 42 more than double the number for that as well. Yeah, aircraft, same, same thing, at least equal and later on always significantly more okay in 44 it's more or less equal but the main argument is that the germans never matched the soviet numbers yeah and uh, if you also think about the manpower the soviet union had way way more people uh, to put into the military and of course the um the occupied uh, territories like the Baltic states, Ukraine and other Asian countries. Yeah, that's also a thing that they are right now. Now we are in 19, uh, we are in 2023. Putin is uh, attacking Ukraine. Yeah, and the Ukrainians are actually noticing that there are basically only Asian soldiers that they are fighting. Yeah, so th that is also a thing probably that um, Stalin pushed all these minorities in the Soviet Union into the service and used them so recklessly uh, that yeah the Germans were basically overwhelmed. All these things are aspects um, why the Germans, I think, never, I mean, they could have won it probably, but the chances all in all were really, really low in my opinion. And they also underestimated their uh, uh, production capacity significantly. So they underestimated their enemies also due to their ideology, thinking that they were the Übermenschen, yeah, the Herrenmenschen, so like the, the the ruling people, better human beings, while, while the Slavic people and ev all others, the non-Aryan people, uh, were insignificant humans yeah, without uh, potential, so and that led them uh, to a significant underestimation yeah and uh, in addition to all that for example there's another thing in germany they never used their human resources as well uh, as the soviet union for example in, in the soviet union the women were also working while in germany they kept to a regular day nine to five day yeah more or less I mean, I guess they, uh, I'm not sure if this is actually so correct, but the, the main point is correct as far as I know, 
that uh, because what I mean is that uh, they worked more than eight hours per day, I think. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, they they didn't uh, really increase uh, the workload because the Nazi regime didn't want to uh, increase the resistance in uh, uh, within the German people. You know, towards the machine, uh, the towards the dictatorship. So uh, women, for example, they were not put to work. Yeah? So they were supposed to stay at home, basically, uh, have children, work in the kitchen and stuff, you know. So being the housewife, um, only later in the war that that actually uh, was changed. But uh, yeah, that was that was also probably one of the reasons why the workforce that was uh, in the army or in the military uh, couldn't work yeah and they didn't put the the woman to work so they they didn't really use the the potential uh, of their economy now as they they could have and should have if they wanted to lead a war like this so yeah that is just that those are just a number of other uh, aspects yeah and then of course the significant uh, fighting spirit of the Soviet troops, of course, increased by uh, the fact that Stalin gave these orders uh, that whoever wants to retreat is being shot and stuff like that, increased the very good fighting spirit because also they were attacked and uh, the Nazis had this ideology uh, of actually exterminating the people yeah, and uh, planning to overtake everything. So, yeah. They didn't give them any choice, basically, uh, then to really defend themselves uh, to the last man. So they made it very, very easy uh, to use propaganda against them. Yeah, and rightly so, because, you know, that I think right uh, in the beginning uh, of this Let's Play, I also pointed out that, uh, you know, while the topic of the Second World War is kind of getting old a little bit, yeah, and Nazis are the bad guys, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that's so true yeah they are the uh, <laughs> the ultimate bad guys basically and uh, that made it a very uh, just thing to fight against them yeah so they really were the uh, 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 personification of evil basically yeah and uh, that could be very easily seen so yeah by by uh, many people that uh, that were under their uh, occupation and at least in most parts yeah so and all these factors and many many more also there were lots of inefficiencies and stuff uh, within the german uh, economy yeah that that led in my opinion to a point where it was actually very unlikely that they would have uh, beaten the soviet union um, although, of course, if some factors would have been different, uh, the chances would have been way better, of course. Yeah. But uh, we can't forget that at the same time, while the Nazi German troops were invading the Soviet Union, they were still fighting a war against uh, uh, Britain. Yeah. That was also draining their resources, especially their oil production. That was the first, the f uh, that was the whole thing why the troops are here at Stalingrad. Yeah, to on their way, as we have pointed out uh, several times, on their way to get to the uh, the oil fields uh, on the Balkan, yeah, at Baku and uh, Grozny. So, yeah, so that's the the bigger picture. Picture uh, just in a nutshell, very quickly. Uh, we'll get deeper into that here and there. It's a bit sad, in my opinion, that the game doesn't really provide this. Let's have a look here again. Yeah, I mean, it is telling a little bit. And by the way, I wanted to check oh yeah, September 5th. So this is September 5th, 1942, by the way. In August, there was uh, at uh, or west of uh, Moscow, there was a smaller tank offensive that actually also resulted in a catastrophe already. But uh, it is actually not really known much. Uh, because the Stalingrad situation overshadowed it so and Stalingrad here was the huge turning point also the psychological turning point uh, of the war because up to here people were thinking that the Wehrmacht was not beatable or nearly not beatable but that changed so so let's start 
with deploying our troops. I think, yeah, last time I already... Oh, I just noticed something, guys. Ah, there, there are, we can see our heroes here. I never noticed that. And they have actually the, the Iron Cross, right? That's here. It was always so small. I never saw it before. Just noticed this here. I just noticed it here on the char. Okay, well then. So, but to get back to this mission here, I'm actually very happy that we got this uh, Soviet, this one here, the Su-122. I think that's really a very nice piece of equipment because it's so flexible. We can use it as a better stook and I guess like sometime in the future when we need to block maybe the defensive role, we need to block um, a bridge or something, then we can just put it into anti-tank mode and I think that will be a very nice thing. So, in the mission briefing we have uh, been informed that there are partisans, partisan formation so and I suspect now that this is such a big area here I bet they are sitting here in the forest so what we need to do is to comb the forest I think I talked about that last episode we'll need to comb the forest and then advance in one front towards or through the city so let's do that and of course we need to find someone yeah and uh, I guess these guys, I mean, let's have, let's have our forest fighters. You guys there and then maybe some Gebirgsjäger. Do we actually have... I know we don't. I mean, like in the forest we should not use our regular tanks, so let's have these guys. Okay, it's quite a long area huge areas they are also spy tanks so let's have them here and then let's have our Gebirgsjäger I guess they get better through the forest the long legs can go there and let's have our Wurfram So we can dispatch them easily and quickly. That's that's my hope here. And maybe we yeah, we I think we need to be quick about that. So let's have these guys there. Some more Gebirgsjäger. Hard Gebirgsjäger, there you go. Can only deploy six uh, thirty-six units. And I think this is a good position, you know, to hold the line over here. And let's have some artillery there, some pioneers. Let's have our uh, Adler pioneers, maybe. Just to check what's going on there. Someone could be here. Let's have our Blitz pioneers there. They can go into this forest. Or one, two. With some tanks. Actually, they can go here, and then let's rather have artillery sitting in the front, ready to shoot. But let's start with the 21 centimeter. And the big question is, should we use this one? It's significantly better than our tanks. However, it is also slower. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I think they designed this uh, map very nicely. So our tanks can go through here, but they will also be ambushed by anti-tank here, I guess, like all around. So we can't expect too much mobility. And like in real history, by the way, the Soviets really poured all their resources into Stalingrad. Um, they formed new fighter wings, 
night bombers that uh, didn't let the the German troops rest at night and they fought for every house yeah every house was made a fortress so that was really significant resistance and that's why I took the sixth army that was attacking uh, here in this area and that was attacking Stalingrad uh, until the end of November to take most of the city and then it was surrounded so tanks go here I guess yeah we can actually use our Adler Pioneers there let's have Pioneers in the front so we already had a look at these guys it's a big pity that we can't really uh, buy any Italian troops so that's what I would wish for in in a game you know that that gives us a narrative that tells us about real history like the facts so we learn a little bit as well um, and where we can actually uh, get more units you know I think that would be nice I think actually that that Panzer Corps uh, is using the wrong scale you know, it's not tactical enough to be really interesting and it's not strategic enough to understand a lot what's going on so although it's a nice and accessible game yeah of course so these guys here they are defensive pioneers they can go into this forest here well i think Let's have our Blitz Grenadiers and we'll have our Ultra Grenadiers as well. Let's have these guys go there. And then we need some more artillery. We'll have to use a lot of artillery here as well. Let's have these guys there in case someone is here. Or there. Blitz Grenadiers. And let's have our Ultra Grenadiers. I think we need like from there maybe yeah I think we will we'll have our ultra grenadiers there like so but maybe to be flexible I think we should take this line here and then wait it out until our guys have finished uh, dealing with whatever is lurking in the forest here and also our Italian friends here, they are suspiciously weak. Yeah. That's all very suspicious. So this guy's there. And then we have our Stooks. And the SU. You guys may be here. And let's have the Sturmpanzer. And the Sturm Sturmpanzer is so slow, so let's have it here. And the Stug can go there. I mean, yeah. Oh, well, actually, maybe these guys. They should be here just to check out that no one is there. And then maybe we actually have one tank back there. Maybe you guys. Just so we know that that it's free. And then we need we actually need more infantry up there. Uh, down here, I mean. Maybe there. Oh, and actually, let's use our Kratschützen. So here is open area. I think that's a useful thing. They can drive up along the road and check out if uh, anything is going on here. And then they'll drive up there and check out this huge forest area. Yeah, we need to make sure that uh, that no one is falling into our bag. These guys will check out this area and then move forward, upward. So, 
spy tank. Uh, they are Adler pioneers, so they can go here, one, two, three, four, five, and then we see everything around here. So I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, spy tank there. They will drive up here, the Kratschützen. Our ultra tank can go up here to see something. These guys will also drive there, so they go here. They are also powerful. Although they never got so much experience yet for some reason. Oh, they are really good. Spy tank. That's our spy tank, yeah. Oh, that's our spy tank, huh? Which one was this one here? Spy panzer. I uh, know the, f the 14 strength one is our first spy tank. Good. So these guys go here and then we can see everything here. One, two, three. We can see this one. Now our ultra grenadiers can take position there. Yeah, that should be fine. We need to be careful though. I bet there are huge, huge f uh, formations here. Then we have one more stook up here to deploy. And also, yeah, I think the, the our flag is pretty vital. So let's have one here and one down there. And we are a bit weak down here. We can only deploy one tank. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen units. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, well, that's not good. But we also need planes, of course. Because I guess there will be a very nasty onslaught on our so bar. Where is bar? There you go. And I guess we might want to use planes to recon the forest just to make it quicker. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't need to click in. So this one is movement. I can just mouse over. Oh yeah, this one. They are the guys with defense, with less defense, which is actually not so good if we want to be quick so we go there let's have our ultra u here and one bf 110g up there and then the same thing uh, actually, maybe two down here, although we are here in the city area. We are close to the city area. Yeah. Now let's have our Heinkel here and one fighter. This guy is the three t minus two three, and that one is three two. Yeah. 3 to 2, yeah. So this one, they never got so much experience, by the way. They have just movement. Uh, that's, it's such a big area, so let's... Uh, and this one, that is a tactical bomber, I guess. Oh yeah, they have two tactical bombers, so let's have one fighter there and our bf here this way we are a little bit more flexible so and that's it that's all we can deploy it doesn't feel like it's enough and we have so many units in reserve maybe i i went 
I, I made the wrong decision in the first place, like getting so many units. But yeah, we need to choose something depending on the mission. And evidently, as there is no river here, we don't need any bridge engineers. And I really regret it that I can't buy this Italian recon. I really want it. I think that's a really good unit, especially as it can switch to infantry. So it could go somewhere. Also, it can shoot back in the air by four. That's really cool. Yeah, and then we could drive somewhere like a city and then occupy it as infantry. I think that would be really good. And these guys have even attacked too. That's really regrettable. It's horrible that we can only see it but not use it. So here we are and we can't even buy it here because no core slots are available, not even as auxiliary units. Well, anyway, so stop complaining. Let's begin. Here we are, the first turn. So what do we see? We don't see much, but here things to seem, seem to be free. So let's drive there. Okay, now that's fine. Good, then you guys can drive there. That's also clear. Uh, this guy's our spy tanks. Let's drive there. Aha. They snuck in. I guess they hoped that we would advance towards the city and then form a line like this and then they could fall into our flank or something, huh? Okay, so the Italians need to fall back. Oh yeah, they are weak and these guys, they are entrenched, so they are just waiting. And by the way, what is this? Ah. So that is something like a stuk. Well, this one is just a little medium, light medium tank. Yeah, okay, so these guys. Yeah, we're not attacking anybody there. So these, these guys here, these post conscripts, yeah, I think they were the, the bait, but we are not swallowing that bait. Mm, I think yeah, we are just falling back like so and then actually this is T26S tank, he can shoot back into the air, otherwise they are regulars, oh yeah, they are even Soviet mountaineers and regulars, so they had some plans, these guys, they didn't even send conscripts over here, Sturmpanzer can start shooting at them directly. That's a good thing. We can actually attack them nicely enough, but we need to see what's here. Not that they have some flak or flak tank around. And we don't even know what's going on here. So that's really not good. Okay, well, but the good news is, well, I guess there's nothing here in this last piece, but let's, let's make sure. Yeah, no, no one there. Very good. So they drive here and I guess, yeah, we are just uh, taking this area here. Adler Pioneers, you guys go into the mountain uh, and the, into the hill, sorry. You guys as well. The tanks. Wait here, this way we will stop whatever comes around the road and we'll see what's going on here. Blitz Pioneers. Go there. They go here. These tanks. Yeah, we're not attacking anybody. Oh, well, we could attack these guys, but then we are in the forest. The 
and save our bomb or maybe maybe we send the Italians the Italians first tactical bombers these guys are totally inexperienced I don't even know how they they made it to Stalingrad so let's fly there they can also what do they see too that's actually good then we can see all this area here so you guys fly there make a sortie oh yeah no effect these guys are all experienced regulars so it's really like a small attack group or like actually a significant attack group and by the way this one yeah that's just anti-tank they also these guys only have land transport Okay, well, let's firstly check out what's going on here. Let's drive there, everything free, yeah. And then we can drive there. Okay, that's free. Long legs. You guys go there. Okay, that's also free of enemies. Ultra Grenadiers. You guys go there, check out what's going on. Okay, no one to be seen. Defensive Pioneers. Hmm. Tank. Let's go up there. You guys drive there. Uh huh. Everything free. But well, there's a huge area to cover. So I want to use the Wurfram here. Because if there, is, there are partisans, oh, by the way, so there were supposed to be partisans, but these guys are regular Soviet infantry and stuff. Yeah, but they, they need to fall back. But we might. They are the artillery, so they can give some. Uh, incentive. So this, these guys. Yeah, this is also a tactical bomber. Let's fly there. Nice, they got one. And they are all... Yeah. They can... Check out this area. Okay, no one there. Now the big question is what's going on here in this forest. I mean, we need a fighter down there. But we need also a fighter here. I bet they will send a plane on these tanks. They, the tanks are a juicy target. Uh, but if they send someone here, like the, the some uh, some of these units first, then they will see the uh, the flag. So let's have our fighters go here, and then we'll have a very nice trap. And then we'll pull one of. Yeah, this fighter here. And then the two tactical, the Italian tactical bombers are safe at least. So, by the way, you guys have now entrenchment one. I'm a bit afraid of this area now. So they are evidently in our bag. Oh yeah, actually our Gebirgsjäger can make short work of them. And we have two shots. That's actually a good thing. So let's go here. You guys drive there. They 
drive here, shoot them. Oh, that was a bit underwhelming, but they are all suppressed now, so the tanks should be able to destroy them in one go. And yes, you do it very good. So one regular infantry gone. And in case someone wants to take the Gebirgsjäger, then we'll have defensive fire here. And you guys can be careful driving there, shooting them. Very nice. And then you guys. Yeah, well they are they are not suppressed. You know, all of them are suppressed. But they can easily destroy them now. However, it's even better if our tank drives here. And what they don't know, you guys can destroy them now, right? Yes, very good. The help oh yeah, that gives them the Iron Cross first class. Excellent, with the help of the tanks. And now you guys, they don't know that they are here. They get defensive fire by them. So the Stuk provides it, or oh, let's drive here, like so, right? Well, this artillery is a bit exposed, I just noticed, that's not good. Uh, no, but not now, because, well, unless someone is really driving in like this, should be fine. These guys can drive there. Maybe actually like this, and then we can defend these two here. Good, and you guys, you could bomb the pl the tank, and uh, we should be fine, right? Zero three, but I bet we will lose a plane like this. That would be just typical. Oh, and by the way, we need. Uh, oh, yeah. We wanted this fighter here, right? So let's fly there. Yeah, I, don't, I, I have a bad feeling about this. So let's go here first in the north. We don't have any contact yet, but I bet something is going on in this huge forest. So I bet there are partisans there. So let us uh, yeah, let us sneak up. So you guys, yeah, that's spy tank. So let's go here. Then we see what's going on. Okay, also free area, a huge free area. Grandies go here into the forest, block anything that advances via the road. Well, you guys here, yeah, you go here, we drive like this. Tanks go forward and block anything that goes there. They switch the mode. Very nice. Now we are Stuk. Attack 10 against tanks. And we will drive like this. That's really cool, isn't it? And the Stuk can provide cover fire for everyone here. Well, here we'll have Flak. Although the Stuk is a bit exposed, but we'll have a fighter here for defense. Yeah, and I guess they won't be seen here, so fly there. 
you guys. Yeah, we need to get closer to this airfield here. But we can't expose ourselves too much either. They will drive there. So let's have this tactical bomber have a recon flight. That is actually kind of, it feels very risky to do that. But maybe let's check out. We fly here like so. Okay, there's no one there. So they can't see these guys anyway. So let's fly firstly with the Ultra U. Do we actually have a better side range with anybody? No, it's just movement and defense and even more movement. This guy has nice blonde hair. We'll fly there. Okay, no one there. These fighters fly there. Ah, there's someone. Regular Soviet Mountaineers and another T-26. Okay, that looks actually like this battle group here. Hmm. Yeah, well, this is kind of a gamble. If they are organized like this one here, then they won't have any flag. So we're just speculating. Well, let's let's have you guys fly there. Oh yeah, okay. So no flag to be seen. Bombing only one, although two were promised. And then actually, are uh, they are too far away? Yeah, I guess actually also not to uh, waste any time. We need to advance. So they need to go here. They drive there. So the Italians need to do something. Let's just hope that no huge attack force is coming from here. Okay, no one is there. Let's go here. Okay, no, nothing to be seen. By the way, we do have the Italian Bersaglieri, the people, the soldiers, the elite soldiers with these rooster feathers on their heads. And I think like many, many episodes ago, uh, I talked about the uh, the series, this old British uh, production uh, called Allo Allo, like hello, hello, but with French accent, Allo Allo. And uh, that's so hilarious. And they make a tremendous fun out of these guys there. So this, I mean, it would be great to have them stand here, but then they are uh, in reach. Of the other unit. These guys, these regulars, they can go into the forest. Ah, but they can't go beyond the forest, so actually that should be fine. So let's use the I the Italians here against them. I think that should be fine. So yeah, our strategic bomber is a little bit useless. So I am still very, very afraid to use them right now. But on the other hand, they need to do something right. And then we have the fighter there. Come on, let's do it. Don't get shot. Nice. Yeah, very good. No casualties on our side. Yeah, these guys, they just stay there. So no one can just waltz into. Uh, the airfield. 
And I think, yeah, you pioneers, you'd go here and you just go uh, on this next turn. Just so that uh, no one goes through here. And then hopefully next turn we can wipe out the rest of these guys. When our other units are closer, they go one, one, two, three, they can shoot at them. Yeah, that would be good. And then we can form up a line here and move towards the city here. Our Kratschützen will drive upwards, make sure that no one is here or, well, there could be another unit here, well, all the partisans. But otherwise everything should be fine now. So you, yeah, you guys are okay. So let's see what happens on the first day. This is September 5th. Oh, the plane. Okay, nice. We've down a number of planes here. Oh! So many Soviet planes. And by the way, the German troops, of course, had tremendous uh, losses here in Stalingrad. So the Germans pulled. Oh yeah, they they destroyed one Wolfram. Ah. How do they see them, by the way? Ah, but uh, due to these guys. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, it would have been wiser probably to put the flag there, but now our flag gets a shot at them anyway. So these guys, they are just luck three, or not just, but yeah, luck. There's another luck that we could ambush, very nice. Uh, these lucks, so, and they do see us. They see these Italians here, so they're something, oh no, I guess these guys. They might have just flown into the air to the airfield, huh? and I guess yeah, I guess this uh, Italian 75 millimeter anti-air baby will get some work right now. Okay then. So, but before this episode uh, gets too long, I think we'll end it here and then continue on afterwards later. I hope you guys found this one informative, exciting and cool. I certainly did. Thank you for letting me talk at you. Thank you for listening and watching. As always, I appreciate any comment and thought. And I would, you know, I would love to have this uh, let's play like like a shared knowledge base for everyone, like not only for me and a few people, but also for the community. So if you have any ideas or you know something like uh, for the given mission so this is for all the for all the episodes uh, and you have a nice online resource for example you can just provide the link yeah i would appreciate that very much and i bet many other people would appreciate that too uh, just so we know a little bit well and i personally i would love a computer game that not only gives us a narrative yeah um, but also tells about the real facts and would have some missions that are designed like the original missions i would find that one very cool and if you yeah if you are doing something like that or you, or you would like to do something then count me on that project i can do writing so yeah thank you very much for watching i appreciate if you click the like button and you are very welcome to join the channel as well if you haven't answered yet, just click the abonnement button and then let's see how things will develop here in Stalingrad, huge city area. Cheers. See you next time. Bye bye.